The topic for today's discussion is sustainable development. Myself, Jaya Singh, working in the Department of Social Sciences at NCERT. Uh, and uh, today's uh, guest uh, in our studio is uh, Mr. R. R. Rashmi. Sir, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, well, uh, I am R. R. Rashmi. I am currently a fellow in uh, Terry. Uh, and I work on the areas of climate change and integrated uh, policy assessment, particularly relating to environment. Uh, and uh, I was working with the government in the Indian Administrative Service. I worked for almost 35 years and a large part of that, almost 10 years, uh, about approaching 10 years I have worked in the field of environment. And I have also negotiated on behalf of the government of India the United Nations Climate Change um, uh, Agreement and related uh, in related fora. So, I have been associated with uh, the environmental issues for quite a long time. Thank you, sir. Uh, it is a pleasure to have you in our studio. Uh, today, we will be discussing about sustainable development. So, what is the sustainable development? It talks not only about the present uh, need of the present generation, but it also looks into the concern of the future generation. So, my first question to sir is, what is the, uh, how did this uh, term <coughs> orig uh, originate, uh, this expression sustainable development, what is its m uh, meaning, what, uh, what are the purpose for which it is coined? You know, the concern about environment in the context of development, Yes, sir. Uh, this for the first time. Uh, came into prominence in 1971. There was a major conference which uh, our then Prime Minister of India Indira Gandhi had attended and uh, the focus of the conference, United Nations conference was on human development and environment. And as a result of that conference this realization arose in the international community that unless we make the process of development sustainable which means environment friendly, the development process will not grow beyond a point of time. It will damage the, the natural resources to such an extent that sustainability of the human civilization will itself will be at stake. So, we must do something to protect environment, conserve environment and at the same time follow policies, adopt technologies in a manner that we also grow because after all the concern of human society is to improve its standard of living. So, while we have to grow economically, improve the standard of living, we also have to protect environment and the natural resources, because we cannot grow if we damage the environment and extract all the natural resources irretrievably. So, the challenge before us is to follow a path of development which is sustainable. And that is why this concept of sustainable development has come about in the last 30 to 40 years and we now have several international agreements to, to which guide the actions of uh, countries and uh, societies across the world in how, uh, what kind of economic policies and environmental policies we should have. There was in fact a Brundtland Commission. Uh, set up in 1987, which gave a major report on which is called our common future. And this concept, this terminology of sustainable development actually was coined by them. Following this, there was another major UN conference in 1992, which is called Rio conference, where they formally adopted this concept of sustainable development and a number of international treaties on environments, uh, uh, several uh, aspects of environment like climate change biodiversity, desertification, these have been in place and uh, that concept is now progressing. Uh, we are now going implementing in various fields of our existence and uh, governments are enacting several policies and programs to achieve this objective. Thank you, sir. Can we have second uh, question over to the screen please. Uh, what are the goals and objective of sustainable development? Uh, sir, can you just tell us uh, briefly how many goals are there and uh, what are these goals? Uh, actually, there are uh, 17 uh, sustainable development goals adopted by the United Nations mm -hmm. and these were adopted in the year 2015. Mm -hmm. But I must go back a little uh, earlier than this. 
because in the year 2015 when before these goals were adopted we had another process of what is called millennium De development goals and millennium development goals were implemented from the for about 15 years from 2000 to 2015 but millennium development goals were only 8 in number they and they had about um, 18 targets but the problem was with the millennium development goals was that they were mainly uh, for the developing countries mm -hmm. the poorer countries the developed countries who have consumed larger part of the natural resources all over the world they were outside the commitment mm -hmm. of millennium development goals so most of the goals and the obligations and responsibilities for sustainable development as part of millennium development goals were basically cast on the developing countries. So, it was felt that we cannot actually achieve these objectives in an uh, effective manner unless we bring all the countries together and therefore, the new process of SDGs which has started from 2015 onwards the goals the number of goals has increased mm -hmm. from 8 it has become 17 mm -hmm. uh, in uh, the and, and uh, um, a large number of them relate not only to environment but to our process of development as well. For example, eradication of poverty, uh, no hunger, eradication of um, hunger which means uh, providing food to everyone, clean water, clean energy, uh, jobs, uh, industrial transition, uh, climate change, land, uh, life below uh, land, life uh, um, uh, below uh, water. So, there are several dimensions of development which have been captured in these goals and the countries have been uh, uh, requested to set up their own national indicators to achieve these, to monitor achievement uh, progress on these goals. In our country, we have 306 indicators okay. for these 17 goals. Seventeen, sir. Three hundred six indicators. Yes. Uh, yeah. We so, would like to have some light on this. Uh, this is, for example, there are seventeen goals. Yeah. And uh, so, seventeenth goal is about international um, global cooperation. Mm -hmm. So that is outside. But for the rest, sixteen goals. Mm -hmm. Each of the goals has a specific set of indicators. It is called national indicator framework, mm -hmm. which is set by the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. And uh, uh, for example, quality education which is sustainable development goal number 4, there are almost 20 indicators okay. on which the progress has to be judged. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are a number of government programs, number of government uh, um, uh, initiatives uh, which uh, seek to achieve those indicators and targets. So, that is how we monitor. Uh, so, when we discuss separate goals, we can discuss how the countries are expected to achieve it. So, uh, sir, do you feel this goal uh, set by uh, sustainable uh, development to achieve uh, this sustainable development, is it necessary? Yes, uh, because you see the, the fundamental concept uh, behind sustainable development is that uh, we must grow without damaging the environment. Okay. And uh, there is a concept of, uh, you know, the present generation and future generations. Mm -hmm. We are consuming the natural resources today. Mm -hmm. We are extracting, let us say, iron ore, we are extracting water, we are mm. cutting forests for timber, mm -hmm. we are extracting earth, mm. we are cutting mountains and hills. Mm. We are uh, trying to uh, do all this extracting natural resources to be able to improve the standard of living of the present generation. generation. But if we do this in a manner without thinking about the future generations, mm -hmm. it will uh, it will not be good not only for us but it will uh, permanently damage the prospects of growth of the future generations. After all, they also need the energy, yes. they will also need water, mm -hmm. they will also need houses and roads mm -hmm. and buildings to, um, to, to make this earth livable. Uh, so, we must protect the environment in a manner that it provides the same resources to everyone mm -hmm. in a same manner. So, uh, it is called the equity amongst generations, mm -hmm. it is called intergenerational equity. Uh, so, that equity must be maintained. So, we must uh, be custodians of the natural resources for future generations. There is a saying that we have not inherited the natural resources from our forefather, uh, forefathers. Actually, we have borrowed the natural resources from our children, which means 
this is a debt and every debt has to be serviced in the manner that it is uh, does not cast any burden on us and uh, we must protect our earth, we must protect the environment so that it is able to provide the same level of resources to future generations and that is called sustainable development. Uh, sir, the next topic is uh, how is sustainable development related to education? Over to uh, screen please. Is there any relationship between sustainable development and education? Yes, uh, as I said, uh, one of the sustainable development goals is quality education yeah. and uh, quality education is extremely important. Uh, the the, uh, the uh, girl, child and uh, the young ch boys and girls, we, we should have a goal of providing universal educational entitlements to all and, and we should make them conscious and responsible citizens which are uh, conscious about their responsibilities towards environment. Mm -hmm. Only then uh, the education will have the meaning uh, and, and which is uh, actually effective. If we, if uh, children do not grow into responsible citizens mm -hmm. uh, who are conscious not only of their rights and uh, uh, entitlements, but also about responsibilities to the society and to environment, they will not be effective and good citizens. So, the the, the function of a good quality education in the context of sustainable development is that we should provide them education which makes them conscious about human rights, the right their, their duties and responsibility towards education. It should help them acquire skill sets which uh, are environment friendly, which make them fully conscious of uh, th their responsibilities. and. Uh, uh, they are able to adopt technologies and processes uh, which are eco-friendly and environment friendly. So, uh, if, we, uh, if we relate education with sustainable development, what pedagogy should be used uh, in the classroom so that it tends to sensitize learners on this issue? Yeah. Yes, uh, I think the one of the problems of modern education is that it has become completely desk based. Mm. Uh, particularly in the urban areas, there is no place for children to get connected with the environment. Uh, so, uh, I think uh, the, the pedagogic tool which we, we should utilize is uh, uh, the education should be quality uh, activity based. Mm -hmm. I mean we should impart education through l more and more activities. Mm -hmm. uh, we should for example, take the children out to field, mm -hmm. they should be exposed to farming practices, mm -hmm. how a farmer cultivates his land, mm -hmm. what are the constraints uh, which he is facing in uh, use of the natural resources to maintain productivity and at the same time uh, wi without damaging the health of the soil or health of the trees or uh, the natural environment around that. So, uh, greater exposure to farming, uh, uh, the, the how we can manage and protect our water resources, rivers, wetlands, trees and forests they should be taken out and exposed to these natural this natural environment and they will learn much more much faster and in a much more integrated manner rather than only through books so you are saying uh, field study should be encouraged by right, teaching learning a topic now um, uh, since you have highlighted about the farming uh, i like to ask um, how uh, what uh, how does sustainable development promote eco friendly agriculture uh, over to the screen please uh, uh, does uh, agriculture tends to harm uh, environment or uh, how do we promote eco-friendly uh, agriculture? Uh, yes, in fact, um, the sustainability of agriculture is very important. Yeah. Uh, uh, in the process of agriculture, uh, uh, we do um, uh, come in uh, conflict with uh, nature actually. Actually, cultivation is not a natural process. Mm -hmm. We we um, plow the earth, we plant trees, we take out the plants and plant fresh seeds. This is all a violation of nature. So, agriculture is, is essential for our uh, civilizational existence because we have to grow food, mm -hmm. but at the same time it should be done in a manner that it does not damage the natural environment. For example, currently the biggest problem of agriculture is that uses it is energy intensive. Mm -hmm. It uses a lot of water mm -hmm. and it uses a lot of fertilizer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, sustainable development in agriculture basically 
uh, should aim at maintaining the productivity of agriculture mm -hmm. with least resources of, with least utilization of water mm -hmm. and fertilizer then the agricultural productivity will be sustainable mm -hmm. it will uh, it will be able to give you much more uh, than what we uh, take it uh, from the earth uh, uh, and and this is a challenge mm -hmm. so in the sustainable developmental goals of um, india uh, there are three things uh, which have been included as uh, the as our um, uh, objective one is promotion of organic farming mm -hmm. the other one is reducing the rate of desertification mm -hmm. and thirdly is the involvement of uh, uh, use of um, much less fertilizer mm -hmm. and making uh, uh, improving water efficiency of agriculture so if we are able to do these three things mm -hmm. we will be able to maintain uh, or improve our agricultural productivity and at the same time protect the natural environment in the farms uh, sir here i like to take example of punjab where there has been increase in the use of fertilizer increase in the use of insecticides irrigation and the production of crops have increased but uh, now we find the salinity has uh, increased too which might uh, decrease their production is it true yes yes um, actually punjab as you know has been the heartland of uh, green revolution yeah. and during the phase of green revolution we used uh, it was basically sustained because of high level of use of inputs mm -hmm. inputs in terms of fertilizers seeds insecticide pesticide water mm -hmm. and the uh, the crops which were basically uh, promoted were rice mm. it was rice and wheat uh, so while we were able to raise the agricultural production to a very high level mm -hmm. uh, the uh, problem was that with high level of ground water use mm -hmm. and the, uh, uh, the the canal water that was used the water seeped into the earth mm -hmm. and the fertilizer basically it the chemicals leach into the soil itself mm -hmm. and uh, that imp, uh, increases the salinity of the soil mm -hmm. so high use of fertilizer is good for agricultural production mm -hmm. but at the same time it also increases the toxicity of the soil mm -hmm. and and uh, then the soil becomes ineffective then its production productivity will go down uh, beyond a point of uh, after some time and it will uh, become uh, totally unprodu unproductive uh, so we will suffer in the long run okay. if we continue to use high fertilizers mm -hmm. and uh, continue to extract ground water because mm -hmm. if we uh, use ground water for irrigation mm -hmm. which is which has been the case in punjab and other areas as well mm -hmm. particularly in the northern uh, plains of India, uh, UP and uh, uh, Western UP, mm -hmm. uh, it will we will suffer because uh, then again the toxicity of water will increase mm -hmm. and the water scarcity will start increasing. Mm -hmm. And after all, our soci social existence depends on proper use of these resources. So we must be able to uh, promote agriculture mm -hmm. uh, with least uh, use of resources. Uh, we must uh, improve agricultural productivity in with uh, what is called dry land farming mm -hmm. where the water intensity is much less mm -hmm. fertilizer intensity is much less mm -hmm. and yet the productivity is high in andhra pradesh we are currently uh, conducting an experiment called zero uh, budget natural farming yes we are where we are trying to improve the health of the soil mm -hmm. and uh, improve the soil organics uh, where we use much less resources but uh, the productivity is very good but e this is yet to be tried on a commercial scale but the processes exist we need to expand these technologies uh, uh, since we have talked about the technology uh, uh, can you uh, sir uh, explain uh, is there any relationship between uh, sustainable development and technology well uh, technology is basically which are eco friendly in nature mm -hmm. Uh, environment friendly in nature for example uh, solar energy mm -hmm. renewable energy technologies mm -hmm. uh, the the um, uh, rain water harvesting mm -hmm. uh, the uh, agri uh, agroforestry mm -hmm. these are technologies which we should promote because they uh, maintain the balance in the natural environment mm -hmm. and they do not damage the uh, nature permanently we are basically renewing the resources mm -hmm. and renewal of the resources is, is important for our growth and uh, protecting the health of the nature as well. Uh, sir, so what is the relationship between uh, sustainable development and energy since you have talked about the energy and the two kinds of energy renewable energy non-renewable energy 
Yes. So can you just uh, throw some light on it? Uh, this is a very important question uh, because we normally we do not realize that mm -hmm. uh, consumption of energy is actually central to sustainable development. You know uh, any modern living in any modern society basically depends on higher use of energy to improve its standard of living. I mean look at our, uh, the, the our houses and uh, the way we live our um, uh, life today. Mm -hmm everything depends on electricity and some form of energy mm -hmm. and higher the energy consumption higher the standard of living mm -hmm. and energy where does it come from we actually have to burn the natural resources like coal oil gas timber f uh, um, fuel wood to get this energy and in the process we are actually using natural resources mm -hmm. but these natural resources are not inexhaustible mm -hmm. they have a finite quantity. If we, uh, we keep on extracting uh, from the womb of the earth, mm -hmm. but ultimately we will have to stop uh, at some point of time uh, and, and what happens to our current living standard then. So, we must find alternative means of energy uh, which are renewed, which are renewable mm -hmm. and that is why this concept of renewable energy has come. Uh, there, is, uh, uh, there are sources of energy which we can keep replenishing. Uh, like uh, solar energy, mm -hmm. wind energy, mm -hmm. uh, thermal energy uh, from uh, the earth or even oh, um, offshore wind, wind uh, use of wind energy in, in the on the seas and the oceans, uh, hydro electricity. So, these are renewable forms of energy and sustainable development essentially expects us mm -hmm. to generate our energy from these renewable sources. We have a government program or government objective of generating 40 percent of our energy by 2030 from non-fossil fuel sources okay. and, and uh, this is important for sustainable development mm -hmm. and I must I am uh, happy to tell you that um, so far uh, the achievement particularly of India in this field is quite uh, positive. Mm -hmm. We have already achieved almost 32 percent of the this target, which means we are generating mm -hmm. 32 percent of our energy requirement from non-fossil fuel sources today, okay. from hydroelectricity, from mm -hmm. solar energy, from wind energy and from nuclear energy and sources like this. This is a very good news for the young learners. We are generating uh, resources from non-renewable resources. But we, we have to do a lot because our energy consumption is rising. Yeah. Uh, by 2030, our energy consumption will uh, almost increase three times mm -hmm. and we must uh, raise the energy supply also in an equivalent manner. So, we must have to, uh, we have to grow the energy sources also. Uh, there are a number of challenges, but this is what energy uh, management is about and this is key uh, to our future growth and sustainable development. Over to the screen please, uh, as you said this is our management policy, uh, is there a relationship between sustainable development and public policy or how does sustainable development inform public policy? You know uh, public policy basically means that the government should promote programs mm -hmm. and initiatives mm -hmm. uh, to help build awareness about the environment friendly development mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. and uh, everything uh, um, public must be made aware of this mm -hmm. public has a responsibility but a lot will depend on how the the government does its uh, budgeting mm -hmm. what kind of importance the government attaches mm -hmm. to uh, management of environment management of natural resources uh, the kind of fiscal support fiscal policies the monetary policies and the government support which it provides. There are a number of good examples of this uh, mm -hmm. public policy which are uh, which intends to protect the environment. For example, uh, we have a clean uh, energy cess in form of uh, cess on coal, uh, 400 rupees per ton of coal uh, as cess is collected and this money is utilized for environment friendly measures in different areas. For example, if we have to make an, an energy transition from coal uh, fired power plants to uh, solar power plants, this amount can be invested there. Mm -hmm. Afforestation, um, uh, we uh, have to promote um, uh, plantation of trees and uh, trees within the forests and outside forests. Mm -hmm. For this also we need lot of resources mm -hmm. and uh, community involvement. 
uh, public policies and there should be public programs for this government does have a number of programs for this purpose. Water harvesting, mm. water uh, scarcity, mm. this is going to be a major problem in the next uh, 10 years mm. and we must uh, be fully conscious of this. If we do not protect our rivers and wetlands and ponds and uh, water bodies, we will have a huge problem at our hand because of climate change. And we, so therefore, there should be public policies which protect the water resources. Uh, uh, we have a major program of Manrega, you know, uh, Rural Development uh, Employment Guarantee Program under which these water bodies are uh, being uh, constructed now. So, uh, essentially uh, public policies means the government programs mm -hmm. and uh, government schemes which are aimed at protecting environment and at the same time uh, increasing the uh, process of economic growth. Uh, uh, since you have talked about public policy, uh, over to the screen also, uh, uh, what are the department or agencies which executes this uh, sustainable development strategies in our country? Uh, in our country, the, uh, the, the nodal uh, agency for sustainable monitoring the sustainable developmental uh, policies mm -hmm. is the Niti Aayog. Niti Aayog. Niti Aayog. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, the goals are monitored by them. Mm -hmm. They prepare a, re a report uh, every uh, one year or I think at the end of every two years mm -hmm. uh, with the help of various ministries and agencies. Mm -hmm. And uh, But the indicators for measuring this, uh, the progress on uh, each goal mm -hmm. is set by the Ministry of Statistics mm -hmm. and Program Implementation. Mm -hmm. Their job is to decide these 306 indicators and uh, collect information and data from uh, various governments uh, agencies and the state governments about what progress has been achieved in respect of these indicators. That data is finally analyzed and provided to the Niti Ayo, which then prepares a final report. But uh, between these two agencies, ultimately the responsibility of carrying out the programs and schemes lies with the state governments and central government ministries. It is they who actually carry out the government schemes and as part of the public policy. Uh, so, it is uh, so there it is a, it's a uh, triangular uh, kind of arrangement mm -hmm. where the ministries actually implement the policies, mm -hmm. Ministry of Statistics collects the information mm -hmm. and provides to Niti Ayo for preparing the final report. Sir, you have worked in one of these uh, departments. Uh, could you just uh, s uh, s explain us briefly how did it work? Uh, the department where I yeah. worked was basically uh, the, is the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate mm -hmm. Change mm -hmm. and it is their job to ensure that the uh, environment is protected all over the country. Now protection of environment involves uh, protection of environmental resources like water, forest, rivers, mm -hmm. land, mm -hmm. prevent degradation, prevent climate change, prevent pollution. And uh, those who violate uh, the laws, because we have a law to, let us say, uh, prevent pollution of air, mm. law to prevent pollution of water, we have laws to uh, prevent uh, pollution uh, or uh, uh, dangers caused by hazardous substances, mm. for example, chemicals. Mm. Uh, we have laws to, uh, uh, to, to ensure uh, to how to manage the waste industrial waste and the municipal waste, yeah. electronic waste. Yeah. So, we have all kinds of laws. Uh, so, there are pollution control boards set up at the government, mm -hmm. which lay down the norms in respect of pollution. Mm -hmm. And any industry or any individual or any corporate body which violates these norms mm -hmm. is uh, liable for punishment under these laws. Uh, but uh, I would like to say that um, it is important to have a body of laws to ensure that the regulations and norms are followed, but uh, our developmental uh, status being what it is mm. in a country like India, where large number of people are still poor and mm. they are not very conscious about environment, where the, uh, the problems of development are much more pressing, mm. it is difficult to achieve only uh, environmental protection only uh, through legal means. We need to have a social movement. Uh, social awareness about our responsibilities and also evolve the right kind of technologies which can help us move in that direction. For example, the two key things in my view uh, or two or three rather 
is one is uh, to make the children and the society conscious about the use of energy. Mm -hmm. The second is to protect the uh, trees and our uh, natural habitat mm -hmm. uh, uh, for the uh, wildlife and for, for um, others. And thirdly is to protect the water resources. And these three things must be part of our formal, informal education. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, I li uh, like to thank our expert, uh, Mr. Uh, Rashmi, who, ha um, who has given us a very valuable information about, uh, regarding sustainable development, how w and why we should protect our environment, because this environment is not only for us, we need to protect it for our future generation also. Uh, we had a very healthy discussion on this topic.